six rights. From now on, the bottom half will be out of sight. Have yourself an emery little Christmas. We'll win the home. with clean sheets there'll be no defeats just wins and a draw someday soon we'll all be in the whole tent on a European night until then the villa will come out and Hi, villains, and welcome to For the Love of Pomegranate Christmas Special. Now, you may be asking yourselves, why are we not wearing Santa hats? Well, that's my fault. I couldn't put my hand in a Santa hat. So we found the podcast hats were the best alternative because at least I know that both of us have those. So uh, this is a Christmas special, as I mentioned. I want to wish everybody here a happy Christmas, a peaceful Christmas, a happy Hanukkah, a peaceful Hanukkah, a happy whatever you celebrate around Christmas time. If you celebrate, if you don't, I just want you to have an absolutely brilliant uh, end to your year. And myself and Paddy just wanted to pop on to do a little short Christmas Day version here where we talk about, uh, you know, I suppose really what Christmas means to us. So what this period of the, of the year means to us, a, year, a period of reflection. Um, but before we go any further, I want to give a big round of applause and a big a big sign of appreciation to Dave, Dave Scott. David Scott is one of, is part of the Irish uh, Lions uh, Club here. You guys who have listened to our Christmas specials before will know that Dave uh, regularly comes on at Christmas time or regularly, uh, we regularly commission him uh, <laughs> to, to do a Christmas version of uh, an Aston Villa song or an Aston Villa version of a Christmas song, should I say, for our intro and uh, an outro music for Christmas. And I have to say that Dave has absolutely knocked it out of the park. If you're one of those people that just goes through, uh, the, hits the fast forward button through our intro music normally. Uh, because as I say, our intro music, 99.9% of people like you, but those people <laughs> who don't like our entrance music really don't like our entrance music. And that's okay too. But if you have done that in this occasion, I'd, I'd ask you to go back and to listen to it because David has done an absolutely fantastic rendition of Have Yourself a Very Emery Christmas uh, for the podcast this year. And uh, I have to really thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm now feverishly going, why didn't I look for his Twitter handle so that I could throw it out there? Because uh, everybody <laughs> well, should when be you're following When you're Dave. looking for that, Neil, I'll, I'll just like to say, even though you forgot, <laughs> you forgot the Santa hat, you managed to bring the Santa beard as usual. So yes. all is good. All is forgiven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is fake grey in my beard. <laughs> Yes. You dye it grey, don't you? Just, just to oh, look like Santa Claus. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, no one at thirty-seven would have as much grey in their beard as me. You know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there is that. And I no, have don't. found it. It's great filling, Paddy. Oh no, Paddy, you've more filling to do. do yeah, you? big, big congratulations to Dave Scott, who told me last night that he's getting married next year. So Woo! our previous, our previous conversation about uh, going to Las Vegas for a stag party is probably coming a little bit too soon for the Las Vegas villains. But we won't turn it down, Dave. If that's the case, if Absolutely, that's where you want to yeah. go, no, just no, give no. us plenty of notice. Yeah, <laughs> and we can send the bill to Wes Edens. Yeah, and, 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 and if, if you have, if, uh, 
if you don't know Dave, look him up. What what's his Twitter handle, Neil? Have you found it yet? At Dave Scott Sings. Not At David Dave Scott, Scott Sings brings up a completely different person. <laughs> Dave D A V E Scott Sings. All one word. And you'll find him on Twitter. Excellent. Yeah. I've I've known Dave since he was an eight or nine year old coming into the Irish Lions in, in Doyle's pub in, in Dublin, him and his dad. So um He's a good bit older now. He's getting married and he's a young child. And it makes me feel a little bit old to see that he's uh, getting married this year. But uh, thanks so much from the bottom of my heart, Dave. We love, love to hear that Christmas song every year. And I hope it'll be a tradition for a few years now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you once again, uh, Dave. But you mentioned there that, uh, you know, Dave isn't backing on, on getting married. He's got he's set himself up a little family. I'm in the same boat. I, well, not, not the marriage part, but I'm in the same boat from the family part, <laughs> uh, part, part of things. And, and, you know, Christmas does really revolve around family, as we've mentioned before. The three Fs of Christmas. Well, there's four Fs of Christmas, really. There's the food, there's the family, and there's the football. And then there's the silent one, which no one ever wants to really admit. There's a falling around the place drunk. But we'll call it the three Fs of Christmas at the moment. Food, family, football. And you can put them in whatever order you want. Some people have football, football, football. I think that'll be somebody's, uh, some some people's uh, three Fs of, of, of Christmas. And then there might be other Fs that come out of their mouth towards the referee, Paul Tierney, at the, against Liverpool uh, tomorrow. But uh, that's that's something I think that, uh, that, that I can let you guys say, uh, and I won't be saying too much of it here on this podcast. Maybe in the post-match. We might get to it, but not on the podcast. But um, Paddy, I suppose for you, what like the like what does Christmas kind of mean to you, or what does this kind of time period? I know I'm not everybody celebrates Christmas, but you know, as I say, it's it's we're going to colloquially call it the Christmas period, uh, and, mm-hmm. and 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 you know, it it's it's just a really good time of reflection. But what does it kind of mean for you, Paddy, when you uh, when you finally pack up the 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 work for? That that period of time, and you go right. I can put the feet up now and have have a little bit of festivities. Well, look, to, to be honest with you, it's one of my favourite times of year. It's it's nice to just, as you say, kick back, relax, <clears throat> enjoy enjoy Christmas morning, enjoy enjoy the kids, enjoying their presents, just enjoying the company of the family without having to rush and race and go everywhere. And that that's a decision we made many years ago that we'd, uh, we'd stay at home and not be rushing around. We just, like, we all work so hard throughout the year and, and December is just a bonkers month. So to, to sit, relax, reflect, watch awful Christmas movies, drink, <laughs> drink uh, copious amounts of, uh, of beer, and uh, snooze on the couch and eat chocolate and crisps and then go on a diet on the 3rd of January and all, all those kind of things. But there's one Christmas tradition that I'd like to mention before we move on. Um, and you've joined me on it this year. But last Christmas, um, the last night out I had before Christmas was going to see Deck Pierce, Block Rock and Beats in Dolan's Warehouse. And uh, it seems like an eternity ago, but the government kind of locked everything down the next day. So it was a, it was a, it was the last big night out of Christmas, and we'd like to thank Deck for sponsoring our Christmas party this year. Oh. Me and you, had, me and you had a bit of a bonkers night out in Limerick at, at, De- at Deck's Christmas gig this year. Absolutely. And Deck, and Deck is embarking on a whole new show this year, and he's playing in Fairview Park in Dublin. You can find yep. Deck at Deck Pierce on uh, on on Twitter. The, th- the things he does at those gigs, it's just it's just hard to describe. It's, it's a really, really enjoyable night out. And uh, yeah, I wore my Block Rock and Beats for this Christmas special. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? We have, we've done a previous Christmas special about when, uh, about maybe Christmas presents people have got as Villa fans. And, and Deck actually joined us on that, but it wasn't on YouTube. It was only when we were doing the audio podcast. So if you stick around after this, we're going to share a couple of little snippets of uh, of, of that uh, as, as a little reminder of, you know, Christmas is about family, but also people get presents and, and how those presents have maybe shaped their Aston Villa, um, their Aston Villa support or dumb, um, as as we would call it, because it certainly did for me. There was years and years and years. And to be honest with you, this is what this is the first year. I don't think I've asked anybody. I don't think I've told anybody to buy me anything for Christmas. Uh, even my own, my better half inside. I don't think I've, I've told her to buy me anything for Christmas. I just kind of didn't mention it to anybody and when people asked I just kind of ignored them but I could nearly guarantee I'm probably going to get some sad, something Villa related anyway uh, for Christmas and I love it just as much as, as anything else I've got it seems to be a tradition and and we, we Paddy I suppose this season 
you know, when you think about gifts and when you think about uh, about presents, we're going to have a Spanish Santa Claus hoping to give us a couple of presents this Christmas. We thought we were going to have a Scouse Santa Claus uh, mm -hmm. at the start of the year. Um, giving us some Christmas presents this th this season, but uh, it's going to be a Spanish Santa Claus. So Feliz Navidad to uh, to, to Mr. Emery uh, out there, and uh, no pressure now. But we're all expecting, you know, nice oranges and lumps of gold in our stockings, and hopefully no coal <laughs> in our stockings over this Christmas period because but, it's it's a tricky run. It's a it's a tricky yeah. run with wolves with wolves who are resurgent as far as and also Liverpool that we have coming up as well. And look, this 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 is a marathon, not a sprint. We've we've had many false dawns. All we can do is have hope for this one. I have great hopes for this one. You mentioned previously, gold frankincense and mare. He he can he can leave them at the door because uh, what I ultimately want is some silver, and that's what yeah. I hope that, that he will ultimately bring to us. Um, I'm I'm loving I'm loving the Emery Emery ball already. Um, I'm looking forward. I'm so looking forward to this game against Liverpool because it just feels like an eternity that we've had anything that we're invested in to look at. Obviously, we were invested in Emmy last weekend and that was magic and it was a, a Christmas present for everybody and a big boost to the club. But we're back. We're back. We've, we've Liverpool, as you say, Spurs and then Wolves before we play Stevenage. So it's a nice little run of games. Um, thankfully, we have a, a, a nice... I'm gonna I'm gonna say handy third round draw. You never know what that's gonna throw up and and what team we're gonna put <laughs> out. <laughs> and and you know what? If 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 it comes to that and and Stevenage beat us, I, I'm not gonna be too worried about that. Obviously, I'd love to win the FA Cup, but the bottom line is is that he brings us in, re-establishes us as a top half Premier League team. And that's that's going to start from Liverpool, and I would imagine he's going to take no prisoners coming into January. He's had a long, hard look at all those players that were there for the last month, and I'm sure he's made his mind up on a few. And we might get that to that uh, point at our end of year chat. But uh, for now, let's just enjoy what's coming ahead. Yeah, and and if I was to write my Christmas list for um, for uh, Unai Claus. Uh, this season, I think that it would be coherency would be number one. So coherency on the field, uh, turning up in big games. You know, we're going to have two big games and three big games over this period. We have the derby that's not a derby, uh, which we always say the game against Wolves. We're going to have Spurs who are going to be resurgent. I can't see them not being because Conte is under a bit of fire. Um, and then we're going to have Liverpool who are going to be resurgent because I'm not going to say Klopp is under a bit of fire, but this hasn't been a year like it, like like the last two or three for them. So we've got a really, really tough run in. Uh, not running, but a tough three game period here before mm -hmm. Stevenage. So I want to see coherency. I want to see, I want to see that Emery ball evolve. I want to see the evolution of that. I've enjoyed it so far. The high press is just beautiful. We mightn't do it right all the time, and that's fine. But to see it and to see the way that it works is brilliant. I want to see us get to to stop getting caught with balls between our center halves, uh, whether it be crosses or whether it be, whether it be balls through the middle. It's been an ongoing issue for us for time in memoriam um, since we've come back into the Premier League. And, and I want to see that stop. I want to see a ball through, a ball into the middle or a ball dropping between our two centre-halves not cause confusion. Um, and I think that that's something that Emery really needs to need, needs to stamp out. So there would be three, three Christmas presents. And then, you know, I'd like a little surprise for the socking in January if there, if there was a, <laughs> um, you know, a surprise or maybe... Maybe um you know maybe Uncle Uncle uh, Nassif and uh, and 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 Godfather Wes Edens want to want to maybe they're sending a present from Egypt or from um or from US and maybe it gets caught in the post and and it doesn't come until after Christmas and I I I I'd be okay with that too maybe maybe in the form of a forty or fifty million pound striker and that wouldn't go astray you know I don't want to don't want to be like yeah uh, Marilyn Monroe with my Santa baby list or anything like that but uh, <laughs> that wouldn't go astray either. Uh, I think, uh, which would be nice, um, but it's going to be a busy, busy time period, you know. And and I often, uh, I often wonder, like we love Christmas, and uh, as fans, Christmas must be a tough time for a footballer, you know. It must be, it must be like, how much can you really enjoy it? 
you know, how much can you really enjoy it? And if you've got little kids, small kids, you know, you don't really get to enjoy it. Like, let's just say you have a kid at 23, 24 and you're a footballer. You could play for another 10 years. And by the time they're, they're 10 or 11, then is it really going to be the same Christmas when you're retired? And and, and then you've got all that time to spend with them yeah. over, over, over the Christmas period, you know? So for sometimes you might say, oh, this guy's useless. I want him dropped. I want him to get him out of our club. Like on the 27th of December after the 26th. And then you're kind of going, yeah, but like, like think of the sacrifices yeah. this guy has to make. Yeah. Albeit he's on 60 grand a week, but that's exactly irrelevant. And, that, and, that, and that was the point I was going to make. And you, and you know what? It, it, you can't it is. It, yeah. And I, I can guarantee you because, because I know quite a few footballers that when the fixture list comes out, it's always the first fixture they look at. They look at oh, who we got the opening day. The next fixture is like this, and it's praying for a home match on Boxing yeah. Day yeah. because yeah. that means they get to spend Christmas with their family. Now, I know some managers prefer to take the players to a hotel to keep an eye on them and make sure that there's no little uh, mulled wine passing the lips. So... um yeah, but look, it, it is a difficult time. While everybody else is overindulging, they need to watch their, their food portions. They're, they're constantly measured. Um, they're in training Christmas morning. Most teams train Christmas morning, depending on when their fixture is. Do you, and you don't train Christmas week. morning, Paddy? Pardon? Do you, do you not play in, do you not train on Christmas morning? Yourself? Uh, no? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I train. I train and trying to keep the kids asleep longer than they should. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm complete opposite. I'm I'm like, like, uh, but not that. Like, I only have this is this is really kind of the first year for Christmas. But I'm a wake up at quarter past three in the morning and go, let's go, let's get the day underway. So I'm always that. I'm always going to be that kind of that kind of dad. So uh, they'll be trying to keep me in bed an awful lot longer. They'll be spiking my, uh, <laughs> my, um, my, my, my pre bed drink. I think to keep me in bed a small bit longer. So uh, I, I'd sure. say in my, my eldest now will be, he's 17. Uh, I can t- safely tell you I was awake every Christmas morning before my children. They've been absolutely magic on Christmas morning. I've never seen them before nine o'clock, which some people are just going to go, oh no. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, yeah. most people know that Christmas morning for some can start at five, half five in the morning. Oh, and, they're, and by 12 o'clock, they're sitting there on the, on the couch like zombies, having to worry about how to cook a turkey and a ham or a goose or whatever your persuasion is. So, Christmas can be a very long day for some people that way, but uh, yeah. I've I've been incredibly lucky, and maybe now that they're a bit older, they might get up a bit earlier, which is worrying me a little bit. But we'll exactly. see. We'll see. We'll see. No, but uh, yeah, and I wish yourself and I wish all your family a great Christmas as well. Before we finish this one up, Paddy, because I am going to in- insert some audio clips of that audio podcast uh, that we did some years ago. Um, I'm not even sure if it's still available on Apple Podcast or on Spotify because I know we changed hosts and there was some mi- mix up whereby the previous host that actually deleted some of our previous podcasts. So that's why we're going to going to play some snippets of this again. Um, obviously, if you do hear a- about any games or stuff like that, if if any of that does sneak in, it's obviously from two years ago. Okay, so don't break us, don't don't kill us in that <laughs> one. All right, it's about the magic of Christmas more so than anything else. So if we do start talking about games, I think I think we were playing Chelsea and Man United over that period. So if you tell you about that, we haven't lost our senses. It's essentially because these are conversations from two years ago. But they were it was one of the most wonderful podcasts I ever put together. And and I literally I listen to I very rarely listen back to my own podcasts or any of the podcasts we do very very rarely if ever if ever. But I've listened to this one a couple of times because I fed off the the love for Aston Villa and the joy that Christmas brought that brought brought the the, the guys in the, the on this podcast uh, that I did so it's um yeah it's definitely something that I I want to reach out there but Paddy before we go what current Aston Villa player is born on Christmas Day I hope there isn't more than one because I oh. already know of one <laughs> I have a feeling I should know this. Oh, you got me. I'll give you another because I'm just checking up here to see if I can find a list of data births <laughs> to make sure that it isn't just well here we go. I do have it. I have a list of data births to see if if there's any oh who was born so okay this is this has evolved slightly. Um <laughs> it seems that there's only one player 
currently playing for Aston Villa that was born on December the 25th, but there's also a player born on December the 30th and a player born on December the 24th. So this has evolved. Um, oh. Will I, will I tell you who's born on December the 25th? Give me a clue. Um, <laughs> how do I give you a clue without giving it away? Okay, he's somebody I think needs to step up to the plate and hasn't really shown it since he's moved to Aston Villa. Shown it in fits and starts. Real loads of effort, but end product is what I'm looking for him. Ollie Watkins? No. Uh, Callum Chambers? No, 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 no. Loads of effort, loads of effort. <laughs> Diminutive player. Philippe Coutinho? No. No, no, no. You're in the right continent now. This guy comes from the same continent as oh, that. Emmy Buendia. Emmy Buendia. He'll be 26 oh, on, <laughs> on December the 25th. Um, okay, Very so good. the person... Happy birthday, Emmy Buendia. Happy birthday, Emmy Buendia as well. But this, uh, th we should have given this, per this fella uh, a happy birthday yesterday and it could be the last birthday wish that we give him because there's a player born on December the 24th uh, who is who is just turned 28 and I don't think I definitely think this is going to be his last uh, birthday at Aston Villa um, I don't think he will be here after the January transfer window uh, actually I'd be, I'd be if he's still here after the January transfer window then there's something massively up somewhere uh, because this guy has come out and said pretty much I don't want to be here if you would offer me all the tea in China I just do not want to be here Morgan Sanson no, but you're in the right country. Freddie Gilbert. <laughs> Freddie Gilbert. Freddie Gilbert. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, who's born? Yes. So December the 30th, 1995. This, this man was born. He's 26. He'll be 27. He is somebody that you think has needs to needs to hit the heights or, or hit the road. <laughs> Have I mentioned him already? You mentioned him already. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ollie Watkins. It's Ollie Watkins. It's Ollie Watkins. So for all our players born in December, oh, well, we miss Cameron Archer's uh, birthday on the 9th of December as well. He turned 21 on the 9th of December. Um, is there anyone else that we missed there? No, that's all our December babies. Uh, on the team but to all our December players I wish you a very very happy birthday especially Emmy Buendia and a belated birthday to uh, to to both Cameron Archer and Freddie Gilbert and a birthday into the future for you for um, Ollie Watkins as well and just, so just, just, just to really prove good. that uh, I'm not bitter happy birthday <laughs> Ollie Watkins <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. No, I went, no, go and you know what? By the time this birthday with a, with a re rejuvenated Ollie Watkins and a few goals. That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. Watch him score four goals over the festive period. No, that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah, he loves a goal against Liverpool. We know that. Um, yeah. So it's uh, it we we might see it. But um, yeah, listen, we're going to leave it at that, guys, because we could be waffling on here for ages. But we're, my seven party are going to drop off here. And now what's going to come up afterwards will be just some little snippets of, uh, you know, Christmas presents, villa related Christmas presents that I had with some um, some other podcasters or some other people that you guys may be familiar with. So I hope you enjoy it. But before we do go, lastly, I do want to wish everybody a very happy, healthy, safe and peaceful uh Christmas, Hanukkah, festive times, whatever whatever you, you want to call it or whatever you celebrate. And uh, we will see you on the 26th again with a team sheet tantrum and we'll be back in full swing again. So from all of us here at For the Love of Pomegranate Podcast, happy Christmas, happy festive period. And uh, we appreciate absolutely everything you've done for the podcast. And uh, we love you very, very much. So with that, I suppose all that's left to say here from us is up the villa. Up the villa. First up to join my little grotto of memories and uh, and fun and Christmas villa fun is Declan Pierce. Deck Pierce, uh, many of you will know from Twitter, he's a fantastic radio DJ here in Ireland and he does nothing but spread the love for Villa over here in the Emerald Isle. I was absolutely delighted to talk to Declan and yeah, here comes the interview with him now. The wonderful Deck Pierce is, uh, is is joined us today, and Deck, uh, thank you so much for giving up your time and and, and popping in to chat to chat to me about um about your villa memories and Not at all. And, and all things. Hopefully, that we have a good, good villa Christmas this year. Wouldn't it be nice? 
<laughs> it would be absolutely fantastic. But before we get on to that and to what I'm terming the, the Villa of Christmas future, uh, let's look <laughs> back at, a, at Villa Christmas past. And, you know, obviously um, you've been, been based here in Ireland as well, the same as myself, uh, mm-hmm. d- getting over to, to the what we would term the St. Stephen's Day games as yeah. opposed to, to the Boxing Day games. I've never gotten over to one. Has, has there been any, any times, like, would you make it a ritual to go to a Christmas game? Or is there any, have you got any kind of Villa rituals that you would have over Christmas considering the past the packed festive uh, uh, soccer calendar that we have do you know something it's funny like I, for some reason I, I love the Christmas period um, for, for you know supporting Villa um, and it, 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 it hasn't always been a very successful one but I don't know why it just it's just it, it, I've always enjoyed uh, the, the, the Christmas games there was always kind of one or two that was on telly and then coming out of of Christmas and into New Year, I always thought of you know the 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 the, the first couple of games in the FA Cup and all that sort of stuff. And for some reason, I don't know why Sheffield United are a team that seems to haunt me around this time. Yeah. And <laughs> and and I, I've just got memories of going out into New Year's Day and uh, New Year's sales and checking you know scores on my phone and Villa getting knocked out of the cup by Sheffield United. That's that's one of my my, my lasting memories of, of the new year uh, for, for, you know, the early part of January for, as a, a Villa fan. But, um, yeah, I've actually been over. I was thinking about, about like, Christmas memories with, with, associated with Villa. I remember, as a young fella, getting my, my, my very first Villa shirt um, from, from my folks. I think it was either the Christmas of... 1990 or 1991 and it was that beautiful umbro might yes. copiers uh, uh shirt and i still have it it was it, it's a large um it was it was swimming on me at the time <laughs> but i was just so obsessed with it because as you said growing up in in ireland um you know in the early 90s and i, I fell in love with football massively mm. during the jack charlton time and and all the irish players that were playing for Aston Villa at the time. And, and I remember my, my, my dad, who's a Villa fan, and my granddad, who was a Villa fan when he was alive, God bless him. You know, I remember my dad put me in front of the telly after the Italian 90 campaign. And uh, I think we were playing Inter Milan and we were wearing, yes. David, Dave, David Platt was playing yeah. and um, Cascarino. And I just remember just falling completely in love with Aston Villa, the colour of the jersey and the name and the fact that the Irish, these Irish players were playing uh, for Villa at the time. And it was the Mitre Copiers uh, jersey. I still have it. And... Um, it was hard to get. I think they got it in, in lifestyle sports. I think they were the only shop uh, at the time that that, that 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 had it in stock, um, and uh, uh, that's one of my my um, my earliest memories of of Christmas time with, with Aston Villa. And I just absolutely adored. I wore it nonstop for weeks afterwards, um, and um, then a couple of years later, I remember you know when when I was older, get, you know, get, getting getting gifts from. From family and friends of of, of Villa shirts, the 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 Agbon Lahore uh, black, I think it was yeah. the third shirt. Um, that, that was another one that, that I remember getting from from Christmas. But I remember one year, and I we, myself and my dad often recall this, actually making a huge effort to get over to, to Villa around Christmas time, and it was it was Saint Stephen's Day, uh, uh, twenty ten, and we had had one of the worst. December's in terms of weather we had snow it was absolutely it. lashing down um and my I I got a present for my dad of tickets and flights uh, for Christmas to go and see Spurs in Villa Park um and um my dad thought we we, we I had it I said to, I said to him look as the flights were cheap enough with Ryanair whatever it was I had the tickets I said look if the weather is so bad I don't mind if we if, if we can't fly on, on the day um, if, if the weather is too bad. I woke up on, on St. Stephen's Day and when I was thinking back to it just before uh, chatting to you, um, I remember waking up on St. Stephen's Day with the worst flu ever. And like now when I say that, I feel like, oh my God, yeah. contamination. But I actually, I woke up and my dad said, how are you feeling? I said, I'm not feeling great. I think I have a flu, but sure, look, we'll go anyway. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was um, it was snowing um, and the, the M50 was like an ice rink. And I remember driving out to to the airport and my dad thinking that we were just the most insane people in the world um and um i, I must say I, I thought i was pretty nuts as well um but we did it and we, we got onto the flight and they were de-icing the plane and and getting over and here i was sitting on, on this flight going over on saint stephen's day with the flu uh, and landing in birmingham where the weather was even worse and thinking what have i done here will we will we actually get home the next day 
Uh, so we, yeah, we flew over for that game. Uh, Villa got beaten as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as was... most of the trips end up. <laughs> I certainly did end up anyway around that time. We, we lost uh, 2-1, I think. Um, but uh, we, did, we, we, we had a great day. I mean, look at every, every trip to, to Villa Park. I remember my, 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 my first trip was in 1995, but every trip to, to, to Villa Park is, is always magic. Um, and, uh, you know, regardless of the result, because it's, it's a day out and just that first sight of Villa Park when you're when you're coming up in a taxi or, you know, when you get off at Witten or at Aston mm-hmm. and you're, you're on the walk up. But yeah, that, that, that was my St. Stephen's Day. It was one of the, the, the few times that I, I remember making a massive effort around Christmas to, to, to go over. I used to always try and keep the, the, the trips over with my dad to the times when the weather was, you know, guaranteed to be OK. Yeah, <laughs> you know? uh- <laughs> the beginning or the end of the season type thing but I've been over loads over the winter period but, but yeah St. Stephen's Day Villa Park getting beaten 2-1 by Spurs uh, with the flu but, uh, but but we went back to the hotel afterwards and had a few beers and I slept well and we got, we got back safe the next day anyway and it was it was a good day out but I always raid raid Villa Village when I go over there you know Next the wonderful Chris Dolan from the Villa View podcast came to share his Villa memories of years gone by but Chris, this was what I want to really do with you today is we're going to go down through some of your memories of Christmas past in a feature mm-hmm. that I'm calling the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas presents and the ghost of Christmas future, which is, uh, yeah. Which you, sure can, which, you, which you come up with today after after being in the gym. So yeah, well done, man. 100%. Yeah, I, that, I, I, that kind of punk rock attitude, like, you know, you, you have a thought about something and you just get it done. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Just run with it. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I just got, I, I get it done. <laughs> so, Chris, I suppose, first of all, um, Christmas memories. The Villa haven't had too many great memories, I suppose, over Christmas over the Christmas period. Some of them do no. spring to mind. But, you know, what's your, I suppose, what's your earliest memory that you can remember of, of uh, maybe even going to games or, or maybe even watching? It's funny, it? actually, because my, my first ever Villa game, we, um, we used to spend London and uh, Christmas, sorry, in London. My aunt and uncle lived in in London, and uh, so we would have spent all uh, pretty much every Christmas, every Christmas in London. So, um, the good thing the good thing about that was, as as you know, in Ireland, especially in Belfast, where I grew up, it was very difficult to get Aston Villa football shirts. Mm. And this is pre-internet, so you couldn't log on and, and order things off the internet. This is you're talking like ninety three, ninety four. Couldn't go on and, and order it on Kit Bag or on, or on the Villa website. You, you had to you had to find it. You had to locate it in a store. And uh, Belfast only really had uh, the top clubs at the time, which were always kind of Liverpool and United and and uh, and a Belfast, a bit of Celtic and Rangers. You you could purchase, um, but you couldn't get the Villa shirts. Couldn't get them. They were they were impossible. So luckily, going to London. It was easier because there was more. There was more of a. Uh, there was more of a chance to to to, to get to get anything that you wanted. I mean, there's a beautiful store uh, on Piccadilly called uh, Lily White's, which used to be a beautiful independent. It's still there, but it's owned by it's owned by Sports Direct now. But it used to be a beautiful independent sports store, like like the sort of Hamleys of of um, of sports shops. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, yeah, they used to have on the top floor. Used to have like pretty much every Premier League club, um, home away goalkeeper kit. It was it was amazing. Harrods as well had a great sports, had a great uh, sort of football section back in the day. Um, so luckily, luckily, yeah, I used to get, I used to be very lucky that my, my parents used to source up source the uh, the Aston Villa tops for me for Christmas. Uh, and um, I can recall, uh, I recall having got many a great shirt, which I wish I'd, I'd have kept. I don't know where they are. Um, you know, things go around in full circle, and uh, you look now, and you know, it's like like Dan and, and all those guys are collecting uh, collecting football <laughs> football shirts, which which uh, would be worth a small fortune now. But um, no, I remember getting the uh, the uh, Coca Cola Cup shirt. Mm. Night four, the Miller, the Miller top. I bit of actually had the Coca Cola Cup um, sort of date uh, on the badge. Um, I remember getting the the away, the green, the green uh, Miller away top. I remember getting actually got a couple of the goalkeeper tops as well. Mm. Um, the got remember the AST computers when we were sponsored by AST computers. The grey. I think the grey goalkeeper top that season. I don't know if it was the home or away, but I remember this kind of grey sort of camo-y kind of top that I got. 
uh, yeah, every Christmas I would have got a Villa shirt, um, home away or, or, or goalkeeper top. And, um, and again, funnily enough, my first ever Arsenal game was, uh, Boxing Day, 1994 against Arsenal at the, uh, the wonderful hybrid and um, beautiful yeah. stadium. Um, it was funny in the, what, in the, what, in the, um, the messages today, you were saying, I bet you that was a, that was a nil-nil and it was a nil-nil. It was a nil-nil. <laughs> George Graham sees George uh, Graham, Arsenal George team. Graham. Of they didn't score yeah. too many goals, and if yeah. they did, that's where the one yeah. end of the Arsenal came from. <laughs> exactly. Well, the transparency that game was actually uh, Ian Taylor's debut for Aston Villa. It's oh. quite funny because I see kind of good mates now with Sales, and for that to be his first game as a, in a Villa in a Villa shirt, and my first game as a Villa fan, it kind of goes around, you know, full circle. So I think that's quite quite a cool quite a cool fact. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's like, uh, especially for it to be Boxing Day uh, as well, I suppose, you know, uh, everything kind of came into one. Uh, you just probably just got in a new shirt, get to go to Highbury to see Aston Villa and then somebody that yeah. years later you become a good mate with. That's what's called serendipity, I yeah. think, you know, that's 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 the way. Yeah, it's used pretty to crazy. It. Yeah, well, it's so, so iconic, you know, like even, I mean, not just Aston Villa, like we would have gone to a lot of Boxing Day fixtures. Um, I remember going in 97, 98, going to see Chelsea against Liverpool. Mm. Um, and that's when they had like Hullet and Viali and Wise, uh, Desai, LeBeuf. Liverpool had Fowler, McManaman, um, you know, just like Redknapp, Roddick. It was just, you know, real iconic players of, yeah. of the 90s. Um, and it was the thing we did. It was the thing we did. Like my, my dad would have taken me and my brother to a Boxing Day fixture. Um, my mum and Auntie Anne, um, my mum and Auntie, yeah, Auntie Anne would have uh, gone gone shopping and uh, and whatever else. Uh, but uh, it was it was always a great it was always a great day. And you, you sort of look back and, and think, God, oh, I've, I've seen so many uh, uh, wonderful iconic footballers. You know? Yeah, absolutely. It's. Uh... Yeah, I've never gotten over on, uh, on Boxing Day or St. Stephen's Day, as we call it over here. So just in case I lapse into the St. Stephen's Day chat, it's it, <laughs> just I, I get my <laughs> disclaimer get out there. We're, we're usually way I too drunk it. over here to go anywhere on Stephen's Day anyway. So it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> usually you wake up the next day, you check your phone, you go, oh, yeah, Villa. Oh, Villa lost yet, yeah, uh, Villa won, or whatever the case may be. Uh, but I would like to get over, it was on the bucket list, it was actually on the bucket list for this year, uh, and as you know, a lot of things and a lot of bucket lists were, were actually chopped, uh, left in the cutting room floor so afterwards. Man. Next up is the man himself from the Villa View, Mr. Dan Bardell. And Dan, how are you doing today? Thanks a million for coming on. Have you any massive memories of getting to, to Villa Park over over the Christmas period? Because I'm always very jealous of you guys that are that are based over there because uh, it's not exactly very conducive for, for me anyway to get over around Christmas time. And, and I do have a sense of fear of missing out kind of whenever, uh, whenever yeah. Villa play on the 26th. But what would be your biggest memories, I suppose, of Villa around Christmas time? The first one is the one that I thought everyone would have said that you've said no one said yet. So the 98, 99 season when we were two nil down at half time to uh, Dennis Bergkamp and Nicholas and Elka inspired Arsenal and they absolutely ripped us in, in the first half. This is when Arsenal weren't the relegation candidates that they are today. This was like mm. peak, prime, proper Arsenal, all the trimmings, Bergkamp, in my opinion, my favourite player that there's ever been in the Premier League. And I think he's good too. And they just, they just ripped us and we were in big, big trouble. It was when we were flirting with being title contenders and under John Gregory. I think we'd only lost yes. once all season going into that game. So we were a good team in those days, but we'd, we'd been taught a lesson by Arsenal in the first half. And then there was some kind of Red Arrows, Santa Claus show going on at half time. And obviously the mood wasn't, I was only young at the time, but the mood wasn't brilliant because we, we were 2 0 down. And then Santa's coming down from a, in a parachute and the next thing you know he's smashed off the off the roof and it it didn't even look 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 red didn't look like a human at, at yeah. first i think yeah. everyone was just tag, so taken aback by it because it the way after he hit that roof it didn't look like a human being hit, hitting the floor it literally just just looked like a crash test dummy or, or, or something and it, it was horrible and then you've got all the paramedics on the pitch having having to deal with it and the, the guy ended up losing his leg mm. eventually like a real tragic accident you you're thinking the game's going to get pulled here. There's no way that the game, the second half can take place after that. And it does end up taking place. And the Villa players have obviously had a load of time in the, in the changing rooms. And I've spoke to John Gregory about this in the past where 
he just he was going to make a substitution and he just completely changed his mind of what he was going to do in the probably half an hour, 35 minutes that they're in the dressing room. He was going to pull Julian Jochi and he, and he didn't do it. He left him on. And 10 minutes later, I think he scored to pull it back mm. to, to two on the first 10 minutes of the second half. He's then made a different substitution to the one he was going to make. I think Gareth Barry came off as Dan Collymore. He's gone three up front and just gone for it. And Villa have come back from 2-0 down and, and beat a very, very good Arsenal. They were, I think they were the reigning champions at the time, actually. And Villa have, Villa have beaten them 3-2. And obviously, that's a, that's a memorable comeback anyway, but just such a, a memorable occasion because of what happened to the to the poor guy that came down in the, in the in a stunt that just went hot, horribly wrong. And mm. I think the guy, he lost his leg, which is obviously a terrible, terrible thing, but he actually met his future wife that day. So one of the paramedics, he actually ended up marrying marrying her. So a tra- something happy has happened from a tragic, tragic incident. But it's just that's the one that always sticks in the mer- memory, just because it was it was so full of incident on and off the pitch. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to date both of us here, Dan, and say that I watched that game on what, what it's teletext over here in Ireland. It would be C, it would be C fax for you guys. In yeah, now I remember. I watched yeah. that on, uh, so when uh, all the rest of the teams were scoring in the second half, I was throwing a wobbler, wondering, I thought that, that uh, our teletext was broken here, and then, because uh, you'd no way of figuring, you'd no way of knowing. No, you wouldn't know. And, and stuff, but uh, no, tragic, tragic um, accident, I suppose, and um, I remember, uh, yeah, I remember my mom would rarely stay up to watch match of the day, but myself and my dad would always stay up and watch match of the day. When my mom stayed up to see it, because it was, uh, you know, when the news broke it was just so horrifying to even hear of something like that and as you say it, it didn't it seemed very surreal even even looking at it um on match of the day and they showed it match of the day which they would never yeah. do now you know they actually no, no, showed they it wouldn't. never never do now but uh yeah as i say you did say that there was a silver lining uh, if there can be such thing as a silver lining he did need to love his life that day as well which yeah. is uh, a, a nice little uh you know a nice little story from it um, and obviously, Dan, at Christmas time, there is uh, exchanging of presents and gifts. And uh, with that in mind, have you do or do any kind of gifts or has there been any villa related gifts that you've got for Christmas that really stand out in the mind? The one that stands out is I've got these gloves and they're, they're rubbish, essentially. They're, they're not the best quality gloves in the, in the world. But my nan got me them for me when I was probably about 10 villa gloves. Yeah. And I've still got them. And obviously, when we can go to the games, I still wear them to go to the games. I don't, I don't know what it is. Like I said, they're pretty manky at this point now, and they weren't the best quality gloves to, to begin with. But I've just got these Villa gloves that I still have I've got. I know exactly where they are. And if we were going to the football right now on Boxing Day or whatever, you can guarantee I would have these gloves on. And I've, I've had them since, since I was 10, so 25 years now I've, I've had these gloves. So they're, they're the ones that stand out. I, I usually get my dad something to do with Villa. At Christmas because it's something that, we, that we've got in common and I think I got him a, a Villa Luke Roper coat a few years ago that, that, that he still wears and, it, and, and he loves so that that's something that stands out as a Villa related gift. I'm glad you said a few years ago I did I didn't want to have to be responsible for your dad finding out what you got him for Christmas two days before no, no, Christmas no, no. this year. <laughs> no not this year no Luke Roper coat this year. <laughs> and he's not got you anything Villa related so don't be expecting it <laughs> and if he does he's taking it back in the morning. <laughs> yeah I've ruined it I'd ruined it if I had it done now yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's uh, yeah. Look, uh, as I say, be, being over being over here in Ireland, uh, gifts, uh, villa gifts were were huge because uh, you know there was actually in my locality there was like three or four villa fans, but uh, it was it was difficult to get villa stuff. So if you could get anything, and it was it was. Uh, I remember my mom telling me before that you know she she got me something uh, from my from my sister from me. It was only something small. I, I think it was a kind of like a a pop-up villa book but she had to order it like she had, she went oh. looking for it in june and annual uh, annuals did you ever see at the annuals he said i definitely i would have used to have got a villa annual every year probably up until quite an embarrassing age i, I would imagine it wouldn't have been something yeah. that would have stopped when i was like 14 or 15 i probably got it up until i was about 25 30 uh, yeah, yeah still getting still, still getting it up yeah. hoping to find one in my stocking this year <laughs> but yeah I always used to get the annual or the yearbook or, or whatever it was below yeah. you, you probably did as well yeah, it's uh, I, I got it once, and um, as I say, my mom was saying that she had to literally go source it and try and figure out. And she was ringing at people over in Birmingham, she didn't even know that were friends of friends of friends to see if they could get it and post it over. Yeah, so uh, 
it's uh yeah villa villa presents always have a have a, a special part a special part of my heart a special part of, of christmas because you just never think it's coming and then when you open it's like holy jesus it's there this is so brilliant yeah. you know and it could be anything it could be like a aston villa placemat or something or a i don't know you, you try and think it's something obscure and it just wouldn't matter as long as it had the crest in it i remember when i was when i was a kid um i actually got um a few years ago I was doing obviously the I was working for the club for it for a season, so I was doing the Facebook lives with Ian Taylor, and obviously I was I was seeing him every other week. So I actually got him a, got him a Christmas present as a joke. I've never I've never spoken to him about about it <laughs> since. I actually wonder where this is now. I like to think it's sitting on his bedside table at, at home, but in all likelihood, it's probably he's probably used as a doorstop in the garage or something. But like just as a joke, got him a picture of a picture of me and him framed, and gave, gave it him for Christmas. But I, I mean, he doesn't know where his League Cup winners medal is from 1996, so I very much doubt he knows where that picture is. But yeah, it was quite nice to or weird, surreal to, to be able to get Ian Taylor a Christmas present the one year. That's brilliant. And you know what? If he does remember where that is, that is a story in itself. I no think. chance. I'm telling you, he won't even remember receiving it. That would be the worst thing. So I hope. I hope he. I hope he at least brought it home from wherever you gave it to him, and he didn't leave it where it was. Well, he would have had to have taken it in with him because we travelled together, so we were in the car together. So he could. He he took it out of the car. He probably went straight in the bin outside, but he definitely took it out of the car. <laughs> Next is the turn of Omar from the Villa Talks podcast. I'm delighted to be joined by Omar from the Villa Talks podcast at Villa Podcast on Twitter. And Omar, thank you so much for, for popping on, as I say, and this Christmas special. I wanted to kind of get a feel for everybody's Christmas memories. Um, and what, what's the first memory that pops into your mind when you think of Villa at Christmas time? Apart from losing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, I, well, mainly it's uh, the Boxing Day game because it's a tradition in our house, mm-hmm. household to... Uh, as it is, I imagine in most households in in the in England, especially, is to go to a Boxing Day match when everyone's yeah. off, um, and it's normally the the game that I go to with my brother and my well, my my late father is, is the game that I'd always used to go with them. So me and my brother go to quite regularly to Villa games and have been for a while. I've been a season ticket holder on and off for for a long time, but my dad always used to go to sort of four or five, uh, maybe a little bit more games a year, and that was always one game we went together. So. That's my first memory when I think about Christmas and, and Aston Villa. I think about the Boxing Day match, obviously at home, if we have one. Um, that's always the, the first memory that comes to mind. Uh, and like you said, usually losing as well. <laughs> Is there any games that, spe- that, that would uh, kind of stand out for you? Maybe ones that you've gone to um, that might stand out in your mind? Yeah, um, I mean, there's loads. But um, I suppose the, the, the best one at home is probably under Martin O'Neill. Uh, was the two-two against Arsenal? Oh yes. So um, that I mean, I remember that. I remember that game so vividly. Actually, um, obviously a great time to be a fan. Sort of resurgence of Aston Villa under Martin O'Neill, and that year especially, you know, we we should have got fourth. And and that mm-hmm. game, I thought was the turning point at the time. You know, we battered Arsenal that first half, and Sidwell hit the bar. Luke came close. Gabby had one cleared off the line, and I'm just all over him. I couldn't believe how good we were because Arsenal back then were. A top team, you know, they had the likes of Fabregas, had about your players like that. Uh, and then suddenly, uh, I think it was must must have been Rio Coca or someone made a mistake at the back. I think he was playing right back, and then Nielsen scored, and then they scored straight away in the second half, and it's two 0 and you're like, well, how has this happened? And then we fought, obviously fall back, and Zach Knight scored that memorable equaliser. Yeah, uh, and I just remember him running off. I was I was in K four at Holt at the time, and I just remember him running off towards the the Doug Ellis stand going crazy and actually yeah, just left foot drilled it perfect finish just fell for him i just remember that and just remember the feeling i'll never forget that great game and and you know we did start doing well after that um you know we won a few games after that and i think we were i remember the stat i think we were th- we were third and we had the highest points any, any team in third had had at that point and we beat black men away and then obviously it all fell apart after that unfortunately yeah. but yeah that that's the first game i think of and then any well, apart from other games, one away as well as the Chelsea four uh, four game. That was my, yeah, that's yeah. my favorite. Yeah, that's my yeah. favorite in recent memory. Anyway, Sean Maloney, Sugar. Well, me and my brother called him Sugar Sean Maloney. I've no idea why. I don't know if that's his <laughs> nickname or it's just it's just like a boxing nickname or something we just came up with. But yeah, I remember, that's weird though because that game obviously I, I didn't go to that game, but uh, and that was back in the day when dodgy streams were a bit hard to come by. Um, mm-hmm. So we watched that completely on final score. Me, my dad, my brother sitting in the living room 
watching that game, eating leftover Christmas dinner, watching it in the combination of CFAX and, uh, <laughs> and uh, well, digital CFAX, Sky Digital CFAX, whatever it was then, and the uh, final score. <laughs> watching it and going crazy when, when we equalised with Gareth Barry's penalty. The kids of this of today don't know what we had to go through. I remember, yes. I remember watching, or should I say, listening to a whole League Cup campaign on Five Live, yeah. on AM, not even on FM. So it had that dodgy click and buzz in it. It was oh, like yeah. listening to listening to something on a on a. Uh, I don't know. It was it was crazy. I don't know. Transistor radio. It was actually an old transistor radio. Yeah. So the '96 League campaign up until the final, I listened to all of it on really? the radio. Wow. And yeah. Some of the best memories I have as part of Villa having having my headphones in listening to it, listening to those yeah, games. Same, exactly the same. Um, well, all growing up, all that that, that golden era really of that Brian Little mm-hmm. two or three seasons. I'm exactly the same. We used to listen on on uh, BBC Midlands, um, and it was used to get this uh, the horn. It's quite yeah. famous if you live in the UK. It's a goal, and then. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the game, you'd be like, is it West Brom? Is it Warsaw? Is it Birmingham? We go, we're going to Villa Park. And you'd be like, come on, Villa. And be like, Robbie Fowler has scored again. And you'd be like, yes. Why? Always Why? at this time of year as well. Always at this time of year, Robbie Fowler will go and he's scoring three against Villa. Hate, hate, hate him. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, great memories. Yeah, you're right. So many people don't know, you know, they, they get access to all these games. I mean, the games on at the background now, Liverpool, uh, Tottenham, and you can watch every game you want. And, uh, you know, we, we never had that ever. No, no. Absolutely not. Talking about, as as I say, it is Christmas time, and, and you know we get the odd Christmas present from time to time. Some of them we like, some of them we don't. And and you know, I know growing up, I got uh, it was I was very easy to buy for. Just buy me anything with an Aston Villa crest on it. Uh, is, have you gotten any any kind of memorable Aston Villa Christmas presents in your time? Well, not really. <laughs> well, uh, we, so we. Uh... <laughs> We do, you know, I'd re- very rarely get Aston Villa related paraphernalia uh, or kits or whatever. It would be, you know, we'd get it ad hoc now and again when my dad could afford it, basically. We, you know, yeah. we grew up in Birmingham and, well, this was for the first eight to ten years, grew up in Birmingham uh, in a council flat. Um, and now and again, dad would treat us to uh, maybe an Aston Villa training top or a kit or whatever. But at Christmas time, it'd be, you know, it'd be random stuff like Villa socks or... Uh, you know, just a random. We, one one time we got the, the there's a, fam- a famous VHS tape uh, called Aston Villa. I think it's called the Pain and Glory of Aston Villa or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it's like a, from '92. It's like a review of the '89 season all the way to the '92 season and all the best bits of those seasons. So I remember that, I remember watching that, and I still watched that for a good eight years, ten years afterwards. Yeah. Uh, but just like random stuff like that. Never like big Villa stuff like like the new kit or anything like that. Mm-hmm. That would just be like. You know, you'd be, I'd get the 95 kit in 98 or something mm. <laughs> just as a random on a, on a random Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. never, never for Christmas. Not for just Christmas. Like that. Yeah. yeah. As I say, it's a, uh, like even, even last year, uh, I, my parents, I went, I went home for Christmas next to my parents just handed me this Aston Villa jacket. And it was like the touch, touchline jacket went all the way down to my ankles. I was like, <laughs> this like, like, like any other type of jacket would be fine. No, I still wear it. It's the coziest jacket ever. I put it on when I'm walking the dog, especially if I go down near near the sea and there's a ripping breeze. And literally, it's it's a godsend. But uh, yeah, I said to mom, I said, "Well, look like Arsene Wenger." That exactly, yeah, yeah. It's one of those sleeping bag jackets, like. Uh, yeah. But oh yeah, I, at the time I was wondering when, did, how, how what, why, why, why would you get me this jacket? And then when I put it on, I went, "Ooh." I can feel, yeah, this is so nice and warm. This is beautiful. This is good. My good pal Ty Bracey is up next to talk to us about his Christmas memories. Ty, how are you doing? I'm good, mate. How are we? All I'm good? good? All good. All good. I'm not sure. You might be able to hear. It's it's pretty much been raining solid for the last three days where I am, and I can hear the rain <laughs> absolutely hammering off the window. I don't know if you can pick it up on the microphone. but No, uh, I can't hear it, luckily, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks a million time for popping on it's uh you know i really appreciate you taking the time to always to, a pleasure to, mate to pop on um and i suppose really what we're going to do is we're going to crack into it straight away christmas time obviously there's lots and lots of football on tv there's lots of lots lots to do what does the christmas schedule kind of mean to you uh and what do villa mean to you over christmas are you uh does it really consume your christmas time or, or, or what's what way do you kind of play it from a villa point of view when and the Christmas schedule is announced. Um, well, 
my dad sports Birmingham City and my brother sports Arsenal. So there isn't really much family ritual. I mean, my mum supports Villa, um, but, you know, she's not football mad. She, she watches every game, but she's not football mad. Um, it's more so the, the friend aspect for me, really. Um, so I live with one of my best friends um, and he sports Villa, you know, which is, which is great. We have, a, we have a cinema room in our house with a big projector where we watch most of the games. Uh, so we sit back on the comfy sofa, feet up and uh, watch Villa with some surround sound, which, uh, which, is, uh, which is fun, you know, but it's, uh, it's, it's not the same as, as being at Villa Park, but I, I'm in a group of about 15 lads and luckily I think 13 of them are Villa fans. Mm. So, uh, I mean, we all sit together at the Villa, you know. So usually around Christmas time, I mean, we always have a, a good drink together, you know, and if we're, if we're at home on Boxing Day, it's usually a bonus, but, uh, you know, it's nice that Villa are. Uh, we're going into Christmas with a, a big smile on our faces from uh, the results we've had the last few weeks. Absolutely, and I suppose we'll we'll get to that in a moment because there is. I wonder is that optimism going to be the, going to be the kind of lingering after the Christmas period as well? But before we get to that, obviously Christmas time, uh, people get presents. There are things, uh, you know. Uh, Secret Santa and all that kind of stuff that tends to happen around workplaces and so on. Have you ever got any memorable Christmas presents? Yeah, I have um, from an ex girlfriend. I still have it. Um, my uh, my son's mom. I've still got a villa dressing gown um, nice. that I've had. I think I've had it for five years. Um, I think that's the only really. Um, I usually choose everything that I want anyway for Christmas, you know, if I, if I have a partner or, you know, family or whatever. And by this point of the season anyway, I always have, you know, the, <laughs> this season's T-shirts and tops and whatever and, you know, a nice villa jacket. Um, so I, I, at Christmas, I never really get presents. So to be fair, that one time. Um, she was a bit crap at getting me Christmas presents, if I'm honest. She would always buy me things I didn't really want. Um, she would never ask me what I want. She always wanted to get a surprise. She didn't really know me as well as I thought she did. But one year she came through that villa dressing gown, mate, and I was chuffed to bits. And I still wear it today. Wear it outside in the garden, like, but it's uh, <laughs> but yeah, it still it still serves its cause. <laughs> That's proper gangster. I can imagine you going around in the in a villa dressing gown. Uh, you should wear it to Villa Park someday. <laughs> well, well I, I, I've been working from home during furlough and uh, my neighbours, for some reason, have a parcel delivered every single day and my, my housemate's a teacher, so he's never here. Um, and I'll, I'll answer the door in my flip-flops, my pants and my villa dressing gown and I don't, <laughs> like, wrap the robe up and I'm just there, beer belly out. I'm like, you're right, mate, who's it for? And, like, the neighbour, I'm like, okay, cool. Sign there, there we go. Cheers, have a nice day, mate. <laughs> And that guy goes back to his depot and goes, yeah, the villa dressing gown. It was the guy in the villa dressing gown again. That's <laughs> well, there was one guy who had come to do some work on the back garden not that long ago. And then he, and I was really busy with work. And then he wants a conversation because I'm in my villa dressing gown. <laughs> and he wants to talk about villa. And I'm kind of like, mate, like, I want to, in my head, I'm going, oh God, are you knocking on the head? I've got loads to get on with. Like I've got, you know, conference calls left, right and centre with work. And, uh, yeah, in the end, that's telling him, yeah, mate, I'll open the gate for you because he just wouldn't show up about Villa. And he didn't even support Villa. I think he spoiled Wolves. So I, uh, I live in the black country now, you see. I'm not from the black country, but that's where I live. So it's uh, predominantly Wolverhampton Wanderers, where I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe he was just jealous that they weren't selling any Wolves dressing gowns in the in the club shop. <laughs> that was probably it. He was doing a bit of market research to so he could send in his form from a disgruntled customer. And he'd send it in. That was Is that my, your impression? That was my best. That, that was my best black country accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what my best black country accent was. Not bad, mate. Not bad. <laughs> Mister Up the Villa podcast, Luke Robinson comes to chat. Luke, how are you doing? First, I want to ask you, Luke, is does Christmas, uh, you know, I suppose really Villa football at Christmas, uh, anything really spring to mind from anything in the past? Have you any favourite games? Were there any games you were at that were really memorable um, over the course of the last few years? Um, I'd probably say the Chelsea 4-4 at Stamford Bridge. Yes. Um, I was only a little kid um, watching that game and you know, it was just a fascinating game. And when Barry popped up with the penalty um, at the very end to secure the draw, that, that was like a memory that I've, 
whenever I think of Christmas, that's the sort of game that I always think of. Um, and then we've had the 8-0 at Stamford Bridge as well, which was just a shocker. So mm. that also springs to mind. Um, but th- those, are, those are the two for me that sort of are just memories of, of, of Villa games at Christmas, really. And would it be kind of ritualistic for you to go to Villa Park, obviously, or to follow Villa on Boxing Day, as, as, as you guys call it? Would that it, does does your twenty sixth of December just solely revolve around Aston Villa for that day? It does, yeah. I mean, you know, being a, a season ticket holder, whenever we play at home, obviously I'm there. But what I would say about Christmas fixtures for me, sometimes it is a little bit of a nightmare because obviously I am a hairdresser, so they don't really allow me to have that much time off in December. So mm. all the games before Boxing Day, I sometimes have to, have to miss those ones. So it's probably a time of year that I least look forward to as a football fan because it means that I, I can't go as much as what I'd like to, really. Yeah. And uh, me being over here this side of the Irish Sea, uh, I, I have it on my bucket list to uh, go to uh, uh, what we called St. Stephen's Day fixture at some stage, but unfortunately, this was the year I was supposed to. But guess what? <laughs> guess what happened? Uh, so maybe it might be my fault. I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but uh, obviously, as well, at Christmas time, there's a time of giving, there's a time of receiving. And uh, uh, I'd be interested to know, were you a serial Aston Villa present getter while, when you were a child? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, everything I had was claret and blue. <laughs> you know, you'd, you'd get the, the, the kit that you hadn't got. You'd get, like, footballs with Villa badges on, mugs, mm. T-shirts, just everything, really. It mm. was just um, just full of the stuff, really. And uh, do you think the the big jolly fat man is going to give you anything Villa related this year as the tradition continued on as you've gotten older? Well, uh, to be fair, I've treated myself really. So I've bought the, <laughs> um, you know, the black kazoo um, zip up. Oh, I yeah. That. Apparently that's coming today in the post. So oh, lovely. Um, I guess that's a treat for myself. Hurry up, Mr. Poisson. Hurry up. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Sure. 